Welcome to nighttime here at the Anaheim Resort. We got fireworks. What a, what a coincidence. The day I break in the jacket, we got a nice little fireworks show. Yep, you know, just a, just got a little fireworks show going on here for my grand premiere, my brand new jacket. The Icon. Hypersport Prime Hero Jacket, bro. That is what I'm wearing right now. I look like a fucking Power Ranger right now, but... So what, bro? You look like a damn Power Ranger. This jacket is not designed for cold weather. I know that right now. I just want to enjoy a little casual ride, break it in, flex it in. We yeah, 11 days and counting to the city of New York, so I'm excited about that. We'll be missing the bike, but it's okay. A couple days without it is not going to kill me. Ever since I got my motorcycle, the weather just, it jumped up. It spiked up. Like it was in the 60s. It was gloomy every day. I got the bike back, and out of nowhere, we're in the high 80s again. So, I mean, I don't know if I want to say it's the bike's fault that it's starting to get cold again. Hot again, but I, I have no other way to, to think about it. As soon as I got my motorcycle back, weather just spiked all the fucking way up. It's pretty crazy. I know, but what other what other explanation do we have? It's not even scientifically it's scientifically a fact. Yeah, I do blame the bike for the weather. I'm sorry, California, for the the hot weather. Unless it's like based on my emotions, and it's like, oh, it's bike time again. Let's start to get hot. That's my only reasoning at this point. Uh, I used to come play basketball at this park every day here on my right hand side. You probably won't be able to see it, but it's okay. It's okay, Vato, because you don't need to see it, dog. You don't need to see it. This was a great time in my life. Great time growing up here in the city of Fullerton. Makes me the person I am. Apparently I'm a whitewashed Hispanic, which I don't believe that, but apparently that's the case for everybody that knows me. Which is such bullshit because I, I'm not that whitewash. Maybe a little bit, but not that much. But whatever. Why am I going to New York? Because I wanted to just go for a walk in Central Park. And that's why I'm headed to New York. For a walk, you know? I figure, fuck it. It's only a fucking few thousand miles away. Why not go for a walk there? I mean, I've always wanted to go for, the, for a walk in Central Park. So I figured, the price is right. Might as well go for it. I've never owned a leather jacket. I've always had textile jackets, body armors, textile jacket. Oh, hey, okay. let's go back in the jacket history of, this, of Mr. Smiley. It was a textile jacket when I first bought my bike, which was oversized. And I learned never to buy really big stuff because if you buy really big stuff, it's super unsafe. Yeah, like the bigger it is, the more dangerous it gets when you actually crash. And when I got my first bike, I crashed. Oh, man. Man, I crashed my first motorcycle within a week of owning it. I was so sad. I was, I was, what was I doing? I was actually on my way to work and that, you know what? That's when I was still making a long distance ride from Norwalk to Anaheim. I wasn't taking the highway because I was not comfortable with my, where I was at. And I knew I was going to take streets until I get better about, you know, I totally learned what happens when you ride a motorcycle on the streets. Mind you, I never drove a car before I rode a motorcycle. So my first experience with streets was with a bike. I did the things backwards. I was 18 and I got a motorcycle. Not fucking 18, I got a car. I was 18 and my first thought was like, let's get a motorcycle. So I went off and bought a motorcycle thanks to my dad helping me take one out from uh, this little shop. It's no longer there in Buena Park. It's called the Attack Kawasaki. We got a Ninja 650R. Thank goodness we got a Ninja 650R. Because we were so close to buying a Ninja 250 because, you know, I wanted to be smart about it. Start off with a small bike, build my way in my progression, and get a bigger bike later on. Ideally, I was going to go for the ZX6 until I got the R6. Because I've read about the R6, and I read that the R6 is like one of the worst bikes you can get to learn on. So, you know what? We went to Takaozaki. The guy talked to my dad. You know, he told him straight up, like, yo, your son is not short. He's going to wear this bike out. Asa, so you know, what was the Ninja 650? Best investment ever. 
I love the Ninja 650. It still hands down one of my favorite motorcycles ever. I love my R6, but I wish I could buy another Ninja 650. I'm not gonna lie. If I get, once I get some good money saved up, I do plan to buy a Ninja 650 and make that my my commuter bike. I would love a Ninja 650 to take it to work because it's so comfy. Like for you guys that have never ridden like that type of bike, do it because you're gonna love them. They may not have the power that this little girl has, but it's so comfortable. And that comfort just trumps a lot of things that these things do. Yeah, high speed, you can get your ass kicked, but it don't matter, I can keep with up. I can keep up with people in the canyon with that 650. I'll talk about the confidence in your brain. Not even matter what's going on here, it's a brain. <laughs> your skills really matter. What's I fucking saying? I fucking forgot. I started talking about my ninja. It got me off subject. Oh yeah, my wreck. I wrecked. I remember when I wrecked there. I remember I wrecked that. Uh, I didn't wreck it. What happened was I was going to work, and you know you start getting a little bit confident in your skills as they're slowly developing. You know I was comfortable. I started getting too comfortable with that ninja. So I'm all driving down the road, you know, just doing whatever I do. Just chilling, comfortably cruising, one hand on the bike. And I do one of these maneuvers. I'll show you right now once I pass this light. One of those. And then one of these happened. I looked forward, there was a green light. And I chose to look to the left because that's all cool looking thing. I'm not gonna say what it was. It was, but it was something I was looking at. And immediately when I turned my head to the right, I look over and the car stopped on a fucking green light. And as soon as I saw that car, the biggest thing I did was fucking stupidest thing I did was I took a full hand of front brake lever. You know what happens on a bike when you're going pretty fast and you take a full hand of front brake lever? <laughs> well, you're gonna go over that bike, essentially. I've never done that ever again, ever since that one day when that happened. I've never done a stoppie, but I did a stoppie pretty much. I was going and I remember the, that it was like this and it went boom. And like, I just remember like holding that front brake as hard as I could. And eventually I was able to hold it strong enough that I launched myself off the bike into the back of a van. I hit the van and this lady's freaking the fuck out that I hit. And I was like, fuck, I don't have a license. I had a permit at that time. So I knew if a cop showed up, they were gonna take the bike. They were probably gonna suspend my permit or some bullshit like that. So my thought was like, no lady. The lady was so terrified, I was like, it's okay, I'm fine, don't worry about it. Ooh, we got a biker behind us. What do we got back here? I think we got a biker at the car. One of the two. Sorry about it. Oh, so yeah, the lady's freaking out. She's like, oh my God, do you need a hospital van? Do you need an ambulance? And I'm like, no, it's fine. I'm pretty much fine. Let's just go our separate ways. I hit, I mean, I hit the car. It didn't matter, I didn't care. I dropped my bike, but I hit, I hit the back of her windshield. She had one of those, like, big old, like, um... I don't know if you've ever seen, like, those van pools. She had one of those. Yo, this guy, this guy's lights out on the left side. Right? Yeah, man. I, kinda, I thought the bike's a car. So, like, I hit one of those big-ass things, and I didn't give a fuck about my bike at that point. I just wanted to get the fuck out of there. I wanted to save my bike, because if I didn't get the fuck out of there, they were going to impound my bike. So, what I did was I... Pretty much just told the lady, he's fine, I'm fine, you're fine, you're fine, I'm fine, you're fine, they're fine, boom, Wait, let's go, let's go our separate ways, don't even worry about me, I'm pretty much fine, I'm not dying, am I bleeding? Nope, nope. So I drove away. I drove away from a fucking accident that I caused. But, but I got to keep my box, so that was pretty dope. And the lady was so terrified. But, I mean, it is what it is, yo. Sometimes you gotta do things to save your, your bikes, because man... That was a scary situation. I could, it could have ended up, ended up like honestly, it should have been worse. But it wasn't too bad. It was actually pretty good. It worked out, and I learned a lot from that day. Ever since then, I have never hit the brakes hard. Even on my next accident, when I crashed into some Asian lady on the freeway, I fucking hit the brakes on the back as hard as I could. And then I hit the front brake because I know what happens when you hit a bad full of front brake. Your fucking bike. That shit starts to tip over on you, and like, the compression, the suspension just goes round, and it's like the craziest, scariest feeling ever, like your heart drops, like when you do a wheelie, your heart kind of like sunks into your stomach, 
And that's what it felt like when I did a fucking stoppie. It was so fucking cool. But at the same time, it was fucking dangerous as hell because I didn't know how to control it. So that's one of my fucking... That's my first accident. My first accident was in the back... Into the back of a car. Oh, and I... Uh, this is my explanation when I got home. This is when I still lived at my parents. Oh, shit. Uh, Z, you gotta watch out for fucking shit like that, man. Like, right now, I... I do plan to go back to my parents in the next few weeks. So, I gotta start... Being a little, oh my, look at that backfire. Oh, hey, you heard that shit, guys? Ooh. Yeah, I do plan to go back to my parents, so start working on my creative stories again. But, but that's what happened in that one. So, when I got home, they were like, yo, what happened to your bike? And now I'm like, see, right here, you gotta be careful because this looks like a bunch of dirt. I get home and they're like, what happened to your bike? We just saw it. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Did you crash? I was like, no, I didn't crash. I didn't crash my bike. You see what happened was that was coming out of a turn and with a lot of loose gravel, my inexperience took over and I just fell. I literally just fell off the bike. That's what happened. I'm pretty much safe. Dude, I was so sore from slamming into the back of a car that day. But no one ever knew that I slammed into the back of a car. Except maybe a few people I told that I ride with. But most of my parents still think I just fell on the floor. I mean, if they ever watch this, they're going to find out. And they're probably going to be pretty mad at me. But, oh, oh, well. I learned a lot that day. So it's a learning experience that's the most... That's what we should get out of it. Not that I crashed, but that I learned. And that I learned not to do one thing that I just did that day. <laughs> 